my teacher, Yogi Bhajan, gave to humanity, if we made all the mountains in the world into gold, we still wouldn't be able to measure the wealth of what he gave humanity. And he's under attack, and what's being taken away is not what he gave us, but the people who could benefit. And I don't want you to be one of those people. The absolute brilliance and genius and benefit of these teachings have changed and can help so many. And I don't want you to get distracted by the winds of time and these kind of negative forces. Vaigajika Khalsa, Vaigajiki Fateh. This Harijivan Singh Khalsa, who is known notoriously as the toner bandit before he became a famous Yogi Bhajan Kundalini Yoga instructor in Los Angeles, has now published a slick video attacking Pamela Dyson and her new book, Premka, My Life with Yogi Bhajan. Now, for all of you who haven't read the book, it is very good. I highly recommend reading this book. It is a heartfelt memoir by Pamela Dawson of her experiences and life with Yogi Bhajan during the 1960s, 70s, and 80s. It has a lot of revealing information in there and a lot of behind the scenes description of what really occurred in 3HO and among the inner circle there in the Yogi Bhajan Dara or Ashram, we call it. So that book is available on Amazon and I highly recommend that you read it. There have been a lot of attacks against Pamela, as you can well imagine, by the Yogi Bhajan hardcore cult followers, as I call them, or Bhajanists and they feel extremely vulnerable because there's a lot of truths that are coming out as a result of Pamela's book. So Hari Jeevan has published this video, which I want to talk about. It has many misinformation clips in there and disinformation, as well as lies, just write out lies as well. So first of all, Hari Jeevan is a cri criminal. He's a convicted felon. I know because I worked with him for some 25 years or so. And I really kind of ashamed to say I went along with a lot of this. I guess the only thing I can say is, is that I was in my early 20s at the time and Yogi Bhajan, who we respected as our, quote, spiritual teacher, was complicit in all of this. These boiler rooms, these illicit activities, these illicit um, businesses that were literally bilking hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars out of innocent people. Hari Jeevan was involved in a scam where he would send out invoices and then take advantage of small businesses who had poor accounting. He wouldn't send out any product with the invoices. So he was busted by the postal inspectors and sent to prison for about two years, 18 months. So 
I think it was, yeah, it was 18 months. There were other charges involved in there as well. Um, tax evasion. He would go cash these checks at cash, cash checking places and get the cash and then avoid taxes that way. So this was all packaged into a plea deal and he went to federal prison for a couple of years. So that's the, his history. And he has a history of manipulating people, doing these fraudulent activities. Then when he got out of prison, he started to do this uh, online trading. He tried to make it as an online trader. So I know because I sent him some money to help him out when he was trying to get on his feet. Uh, this was after he got out of prison. So that didn't work out. So he decided to go teach Kundalini Yoga and try to make a go of that. So this seemed to really uh, work well for him because he's, he's a good talker. He's a good uh, persuader, as we all know with this past fraudulent businesses he was involved in. Now, there are two Hari Jeevans. Uh, this is very interesting. The other Hari Jeevan was busted by the Federal Trade Commission and charged in a field of schemes for his activities, having to do with selling gemstones at inflated price that weren't nearly worth what he was selling them for. And he was saying that they would be a good investment. You could resell them and things like this. So the Federal Trade Commission busted him. And he's the right-hand man of Yogi Bhajan. So Yogi Bhajan knew about all of these scams, all of these um, businesses that we were involved in there in Los Angeles. And so we figured that this was making money for him and this, and this Dharma, as he called it. He would come into the boiler room and say, there's no karma on the telephone. Uh, so we thought it was perfectly okay. We just make up fake names, fake up, make these pitches that were um, fraudulent to do anything to get people to um, uh, give us their information so that we could, you know, send out these um, uh, products that were not worth nearly what they were for. And then in the case of Hari Jeevan Jr., as we used to call him, they would be actually sending out invoices with no product. So this was the background of Hari Jeevan's, this Hari Jeevan Jr., the one who's the Kundalini Yoga instructor now. This is his background. He's involved in these criminal activities uh, along with Yogi Bhajan. Now, after, like I said, he got out of prison, he started to do this trading, uh, trading, it just didn't work out. So now he got into the yoga. So he states on his website that he'd been doing yoga, teaching yoga for many, many years. Um, I'm not sure exactly what that number is, but many, many years before he actually started really teaching. I never knew him to ever teach yoga before that. So I really question that. I think he picked up this teaching yoga because he saw he could make money doing it. And the last time I talked to him was when I was in India there um, in around 2008, I believe it was. I talked to him on the telephone and I was starting to see that these activities that we were involved in were fraudulent, um, illegal activities that I was actually really regretting. This was after Yogi Bhajan had uh, passed away. So I was understanding that we really were developing a karma. And it wasn't like Yogi Bhajan told us that it was all for the Dharma. Because it turned out that Yogi Bhajan was using this money to um, get him cars and jewelry. He had a huge collection of jewelry. And we go to fancy restaurants all the time in Beverly Hills. So this was really what this money was going for. Even besides that, even if it was going for good causes, it's no reason to be involved in illicit businesses. So 
The reason I'm telling you this is so that you get a background of what this Hari Jeevan is really like. You, this is the one that's made this slick video. Now, after I got back from India, I started to talk about a lot of these things and talk about these frauds and these uh, illicit activities and businesses that Hari Jeevan was involved in. He didn't like that. And when I talked to him on the phone, um, he said, I don't want any of these things known about these activities to, to anyone. And he was telling me in a very deep kind of hypnotic voice about how he was like a command, this neuro-linguistic programming he was using on me. And he's a master at that. I know how this works because I'm certified and was certified in 1980 to practice this neuro-linguistic programming as it's called. And it's a technique where you can manipulate people you can implant um, subconscious in the subconscious subliminal messages and commands so that you can get people to do what you want them to do, basically. It is not something that I continued to do. I was very disturbed, actually, by what I saw at this course in 1980 when I went to the course, the NLP course at Santa Cruz University. This um, Grinder and Richard Bandler were the top people there teaching this course. And Hari Jeevan uh, really took on to this NLP. And you can see it in his video that he's produced here that attacks uh, Pamela. It uses subliminal messages. Uh, there's very soft music that is playing in the background, this white sun. Uh, sadly, he's used them to create this atmosphere where you feel very relaxed and you are very susceptible to these hypnotic um, messages, the subliminal messages that are implanted by Hari Jeevan in this video. So anyway, when I, when I talked to Hari Jeevan the last time, he used this NLP on me and he said in this very kind of hypnotic voice says, I do not want this information out there about my past, something like this. And he thought he was going to um, get me, command me to, to stop um, exposing his crimes. I wrote to the, uh, actually called the um, attorney general's office in Colorado and got all of the documents having to do with his case. They're all published on the internet and you can see exactly the charges that he was charged with, exactly what restitution he has to pay. And uh, he's still paying it, by the way, as far as I know. I have to check and make sure. So these were all things that he did not want to be exposed. So. Let's get to the, to the video itself. In the first part of the video, he, he, get, he gives Yogi Bhajan sitting there uh, giving one of his lectures. And Yogi Bhajan was a master at this manipulation and implanting these subconscious messages as well. He would have us all lie out um, after a really vigorous uh, yoga um, class. And then he would play the gong. And this made us more susceptible to these hidden messages. He would talk in a very hypnotic and etheric kind of voice. And this is exactly what Hari Jeevan has learned and used in this video and uses this also in his classes. I read some very disturbing messages by some of his students where they one person said that they were afraid actually to close their eyes because they thought they'd be hypnotized by Hari Jeevan 
during this layout session, as they call it. So Yogi Bhajan did this all the time. And it's very interesting to me how Hari Jeevan has it, claims, and I believe it, he has claimed that he has attended more tantric yoga courses than anyone else. And I think that's true. Uh, Hari Jeevan would travel with uh, Yogi Bhajan every single weekend, every place all around the world, and take these tantric yoga classes. And I think that he is really under this hypnotic uh, trance, if you will, that Yogi Bhajan placed him in, uh, in all of these uh, tantric yoga classes that he attended. And you can tell, and if you watch the video, and I'll put a link to it, obviously, in the description here, um, you can tell that Hari Jeevan Singh is uh, really under the influence of Yogi Bhajan. His life, Hari Jeevan's life is completely centered around the legacy and the teachings of Yogi Bhajan. So he has a vested interest in making sure that Yogi Bhajan's legacy is not discredited, that it continues um, the way it's been, where Hari Jeevan's making thousands of dollars off of this teacher's training and all of these different yoga classes that he teaches, because it's been packaged as being ancient and being a uh, technology, if you will, that is mystical and has secret elements to it that only uh, Yogi Bhajan knew and passed on to his elite students like Hari Jeevan, who attended all these tantric yoga classes. So this is what Hari Jeevan wants the world and all of the Yogi Bhajan uh, Kundalini Yoga students to see is only this mystical, ancient, secret practice that only he can, pr he, only he can provide. Now, in this video, uh, Hari Jeevan sets up a situation where he says that it's your choice if you believe what Pamela is talking about and uh, you can choose your destiny or your fate, as he puts it. And, and he puts Yogi Bhajan lectures in there that where Yogi Bhajan is saying the same kind of psychobabble. The fact is there is only one truth. There's none of this a destiny or fate. Yogi Bhajan is setting himself up, and Hari Jeevan also, where they are the ones deciding your destiny. So they make it look like you're deciding your destiny, but it's actually them that are deciding your destiny. It was, it was um, Yogi Bhajan before he died, now it's Hari Jeevan. And in fact, Hari Jeevan is, is playing like guru for all of his uh, students there at this Rama Institute. I'll put a picture of the students putting flower petals for him down as he walks up to the stage. It's uh, pretty culty, if you ask me. So you can see that Hari Jeevan setting himself up as a guru. And he's uh, actually, I've read that he's arranged marriages now, uh, just like Yogi Bhajan um, used to do. Uh, he's mirroring himself after Yogi Bhajan, creating, creating himself as, a, as another guru, in a sense. So he has a lot to lose if Pamela's book has influence on the Yogi Bhajan Kundalini Yoga students. And if they leave or they stop doing the Kundalini Yoga, he really has a lot to lose. I want to point that out. So I actually had a list of points here I wanted to talk about. Um, Oh, I don't know if I mentioned, but Hari Jeevan is an expert at face reading also. So this is something that I studied as well. And it's a, it's a technique that you can use in order to, again, get people to do what you want to do. If you can see that they have a certain um, character, then you can target your persuasive persuasion towards what they want to hear, develop a rapport with that person. 
you anchor them to a particular thing that they'll be interested in because you can read their face. So this is something that Hari Jeevan is really an expert at. And uh, he's used this to attract students. He's used this to keep them in his uh, cult of personality, if you will. And Yogi Bhajan did the same thing, actually, too. The other thing I want to point out is, is that um, Hari Jeevan has this criminal past, and Yogi Bhajan also has a very questionable past as well. We all know now, or maybe not everybody, but there's a widely circulated uh, academic study by a Philip Deslepi, who interviewed many of the former followers of Yogi Bhajan and the um, people that were with Yogi Bhajan uh, when he came uh, to the United States, family members, and, and a lot of people that were around and close to Yogi Bhajan, those who were still, still alive. He interviewed these people. And basically he found that Yogi Bhajan made up a lot of the exercises, the yoga exercises, the, the mantras, uh, a lot of it. And uh, Kundalini Yoga. He created um, a fake lineage and he attributed a lot of uh, this lineage to uh, the Sikh religion by creating this, what he called a golden chain. It is completely false and uh, has been discredited by Sikhs uh, and this academic study as well. Yogi Bhajan claimed that um, before, before Guru Nanak, Krishna taught this Kundalini Yoga, and then Guru Nanak was passed on to Guru Nanak, who's a Sikh uh, Guru, and that Guru Nanak passed it on to Baba Siri Chand, and then to Guru Ram Das, who's also a Sikh Guru, and then eventually Guru Ram Das passed this on in a, in a the secret, um, in a dream that Yogi Bhajan had. And uh, continued, Yogi Bhajan continued to channel this Guru Ramdas. It's complete fantasy. Um, Sikhs have said this is completely false. I've, I've read um, academic studies and sc scholar, scholarly uh, papers by um, Sikhs that say this is complete fantasy. So Yogi Bhajan was a business person. He was a customs officer in India before he came to the United States, and he met this um, Swami, um, Dharandari uh, Brahmacharya. I'm sorry if I mispronounced his name, but he was the yoga teacher to Indira Gandhi. And so Yogi Bhajan saw uh, this um, high profile yoga teacher and saw he was doing really successful. So Yogi Bhajan got this idea, I'll go to the West and I'll start teaching this yoga too and I'll make a lot of money. So that's exactly what he did. And he made up this fake lineage, uh, made up these exercises to make them unique, to make them look like they were ancient and that they were some kind of um, mystical, magical practice that would liberate people. This is all he said. He said, you'll, if you do all these things right, you'll get liberated in 40 days. Well, okay, there's a lot of people have been doing this, these exercises in Yogi Bhajan's group for 50 years and have never been liberated. I've never seen anybody liberated. So this was the, this was the storyline that Yogi Bhajan created out there. And so he saw that it was being very successful. So he accumulated money, power um, from this. And on, as a side, he... Um, treat, he got a lot of these female secretaries around him and um, treated them like mistresses. Um, so that brings me to my point in the video that Hari Jeevan made. He says, Premka uh, was named by Yogi Bhajan Premka because it meant beloved. This is not true. I have uh, talked to Punjabis who are obviously fluent in Punjabi language, and they say this Premka name is a very bad name. It has, it's a derogatory 
demeaning name that is given to somebody who has a mistress. So Yogi Bhajan, um, I think he just saw these young, uh, vulnerable Western white women, and he wanted to have a mistress. And then he used um, Pamela, or Premka as he called her, as a mistress. And uh, you can read the book, in the book, um, Pamela gives very detailed accounts of her relationship with Yogi Bhajan. And it seems to me that this is accurate, that Yogi Bhajan treated her like a mistress. And for all intents and purposes, um, she was a mistress to Yogi Bhajan in, in, in his, in his um, view of things. Okay? And, you know, he, Pamela claims that she had his child and then he, went, he had it aborted. So this is something that any Punjabi um, man who, was, who had impregnated um, his mistress would have done, just have an abortion. That's how he used her, like a prostitute. So Harijivan doesn't know uh, the facts and the reality of the whole situation. So the other thing, point I want to make is, is that when I was in India, uh, on, I was arrested there on false charges from 2007 until 2009, I escaped. It's all in my book, by the way. Um, my book is Confessions of an American Sikh, and it gives a lot of um, inside information about um, the Yogi Bhajan group and my um, relationship with Yogi Bhajan, my experiences with the Yogi Bhajan. Um, I was living in Los Angeles and Espanola, where Yogi Bhajan was. And I <clears throat> also talk about all these business, illegal business activities that Harijivan and I were involved in as well. Both the Harijivans too. So, um, when I was in India, I realized that there was like 10,000 of these Yogi Bhajans. Um, and I started thinking, well, you know, Yogi Bhajan is not unique and he doesn't have um, uh, this um, secret mystical um, answer to uh, liberation, if you will, or enlightenment. Uh, there's 10,000 of these Babas out there, as, you call, as we call them. So this was something that I realized then. And it shows that Yogi Bhajan uh, has this background that is not that credible, in other words. So let's get back to the video that Hari Jeevan made. As I said, he's put this very relaxing music in there, and um, he's claimed that um, Premka wrote this book for money. Uh, he says that she claims, he, he claims that she filed a lawsuit against Yogi Bhajan for money. Now, this is a very common uh, accusation that cults will make if they are trying to discredit somebody, that the person in question has published a book telling their experiences because they're being paid by a perceived enemy. I have experienced the same um, allegation by members of the Yogi Bhajan uh, community. Gurmastik Singh, who is the CEO of SikhNet, has accused me of being paid to spread lies. And he's published this accusation on the internet. So this is completely false, but it's a way to divert attention away from the message that I and people like Pamela are trying to convey about these lies and these this disinformation um, that the Yogi Bhajan organizations are trying
trying to disseminate in order to discredit me and others that are, that are exposing um, their practices. So now in the book, uh, in, in the video, I'm sorry, Hari, Hari Jeevan also says that the lawsuit was dismissed. He talks about this in there. This is categorically not correct. It's a false statement. The lawsuit that Pamela filed in the mid 1980s was settled out of court. And what happened was I talked to the attorney who represented Pamela and he told me that Yogi Bhajan hired many attorneys to fight this lawsuit and threw hundreds of thousands of dollars at it. They filed motion after motion and kept um, Pamela and her attorney in the court constantly. It was costing Pamela and uh, this Pritam Singh, who was um, helping pay for the lawsuit, was costing them hundreds of thousands of dollars and it was just going on and on and on. So it was just wearing Pamela down. So finally, um, Pamela decided to settle with Yogi Bhajan. So there was an undisclosed amount paid, I've heard, by other people in, in, um, for Yogi Bhajan. And we, we really like to know a lot of us who are interested in this topic, how much was paid and exactly who paid that for Yogi Bhajan. So this amount was paid to Pamela and she dropped the lawsuit after that. It was never dismissed. <laughs> it was a valid, valid lawsuit, in fact. So the other point I want to make about this is, is that Yogi Bhajan would never come to have his deposition taken. Uh, the attorney told me, this Peter Gregorios, I think is his name, he's in Pittsburgh. I talked to him about 2010 or so, and he told me that Yogi Bhajan would never come to these depositions. He would get excuses from his uh, 3HO uh, um, doctors his doctors that looked out after him that were part of his group. And they would give him excuses to, um, so he wouldn't have to come to the depositions that he had health problems. Well, I was on security during the 1980s there during the time of this lawsuit. And I know for a fact that Yogi Bhajan could have come and testified because we would go to La Scala and we would go shopping in Beverly Hills um, all the time. So, uh, this was, uh, I believe, a um, spurious um, feigning that he was, uh, that Yogi Bhajan was ill and he couldn't come to these depositions. He just didn't want to testify and testify under the bright lights, as this uh, Peter says, the attorney for Pamela. So. Now, the other thing I want to point out in this video is, is how the um, video, in, in the video, Hari Jeevan says that Pamela is putting people into a trance with her, with her poetic uh, skill. And I thought it was very interesting. You w watch the video. Um, it's like Hari Jeevan is giving you a subliminal command be in a trance, be in a trance. So instead of he's diverting what he's saying, instead of Pamela putting you into a trance, he is putting you into a trance and spellbounding you into this trance during, during his video. So be very careful and be very aware when you watch Hari Jim's video that this is what he's really up to doing. So there's a couple more points that I want to make about the disinformation that's being disseminated in Hari Jeevan's video. The first point is how Hari Jeevan 
says that Pamela begged for forgiveness and that she retracted her claims in the lawsuit and said they were all lies. Well, according to Pamela, and from what I saw when I was around her in Espanola in 1988, I never saw her beg for forgiveness or apologize to Yogi Bhajan. Uh, this is a common narrative that has been put out there in order to discredit Pamela, that she returned to Espanola and begged for forgiveness um, and said that she lied about the lawsuit. Um, I never heard her say that. Um, there was never any public statement to that effect. But knowing Yogi Bhajan, how I do, I'm pretty sure that he spun this and made this into a narrative that would fit his agenda um, of um, putting him in the best light of this whole thing and, and claiming Pamela had lied about everything. So Pamela, in fact, has commented recently in this um, Facebook page, Premka, White Bird in a Golden Cage, how she came to Espanola uh, in 1998 uh, only when Yogi Bhajan had uh, relentlessly pursued her, is the way she puts it, and uh, persuaded her to come to Espanola uh, to meet him. So Pamela went there, and the way she describes it, she went in order to try to reconcile with Yogi Bhajan. And uh, this was unsuccessful the way she describes it because she saw that um, he was just uh, the same as he ever was. And um, so she left there and she said she never apologized uh, and never said anything that she had lied in the lawsuit or anywhere else. Now, the other point I want to make here is how Hari Jeevan says in his video that he was attracted to the teachings of Yogi Bhajan because uh, it offered a way to attain happiness and, and a, to attain peace of mind. And he quotes a translation uh, that was done by Pamela, really a transliteration of the Gurmukhi uh, Sikh scriptures uh, in the Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib. Uh, th these are scriptures that were translated or transliterated by uh, Pamela or Premka. And so Harij even quotes this. And he says in myths that um, he does not know Gurmukhi, and he says Pamela did not know Gurmukhi at the time, which I think is true. So he doesn't understand what the Shabad, or that particular um, phrase in the Gurmukhi means. Now, this brings an important point, how Yogi Bhajan didn't even know Gurmukhi. In fact, he took Sikh scriptures, the Gurmukhi, the Gurbani, and he twisted it. And he twisted it, put it into mantras of his own making, and, and then put it into his Kundalini Yoga and his Tantric Yoga. Uh, this is no small matter. Many Sikhs are very disturbed by this, and it's, um, it's a real uh, disrespect of Gurbani, of the Sikh uh, faith. It's appropriating in the Sikh scriptures in, in, in an incorrect way, in a way that shows disrespect. And so if Hari Jeevan thought that he was actually um, getting peace and happiness by reciting these mantras, as he calls them, 
that Yogi Bhajan made up or, and, and used safe scriptures, safe scriptures to, to um, uh, practice, then he's mistaken because this, this twisting of the safe scriptures is not a way to obtain um, the, the full value or the peace that would be attained if you are uh, reciting the scriptures properly. So he was misled by Yogi Bhajan, to put it simply. We all were misled by Yogi Bhajan because Yogi Bhajan did not know Sikh scriptures and he did not know uh, the proper practice of Sikhi, as we call it, or the practice of the Sikh faith. In fact, Pamela tells in her book how um, she was led by Yogi Bhajan into this sacred Amrit uh, ceremony of the Sikhs when she was an Amritsar, I believe that was in 1970, on a yatra with Yogi Bhajan. And she knew nothing about the Sikh religion. She didn't know anything about this ceremony, which is a, the most sacred ceremony uh, for the Sikhs to take on this Amrit, as they call it. Take the Amrit, which is a baptism into the Sikh faith. And by taking this Amrit, you take on the responsibility of following the Sikh code of conduct. And she and the others that Yogi Bhajan led into this ceremony knew nothing about uh, the Sikh faith and how to live as a proper Amrit Dari Sikh, as we call them. So this is a lot of information that Hari Jeevan was misled on and he has not taken the time to really fully research what Yogi Bhajan taught him. And so for that, he needs to really look deeply into what he is saying. I believe that that's all the points I had um, about Hari Jeevan's video. Um, like I said, again, it's, it's really a classic example of how you use this neuro-linguistic programming to um, hypnotize or to, to plant these subliminal commands into um, a video like this. Just makes you feel relaxed with the music on the background. And then you're more susceptible to um, suggestion that, you know, to believe Yogi Bhajan, to um, believe in this uh, destiny of Yogi Bhajan over the fate of your own um, consciousness, your own choice. So Hari Jeevan paints Pamela's choice to um, marry uh, Sri Brahma Singh as fate and Yogi Bhajan's um, command of following destiny is that's the right choice. Yogi Bhajan's command, following his command. So this is really very, like I said, very um, usual technique in um, getting people to do what you want using this neuro-linguistic programming. Like I said, I cho choose not to use this. And, and Hari Jeevan went on to uh, work with this Richard Bandler and he became very good friends with him. So he's, he's very adept and skilled at um, using this neuro-linguistic programming to get people to do what he wants to do. So anybody who takes classes from, the, from, from Hari Jeevan should know that this is what he employs. Now, a lot of people have talked about in these groups how we move forward. And I just read some posts and comments this morning how we can make suggestions or make demands, I think more like, to the Yogi Bhajan organizations 
And so I think that this would be a really good way that we put down a list of demands that, that um, need to be implemented um, in order to uh, make these changes over there. And there's a great um, Facebook page. Uh, it's called Premka Wiper in the Golden Cage, where a lot of these discussions are going on. And I um, would uh, encourage people to go there, visit that Facebook page, and uh, participate in, in this um, ongoing discussion. There's been some real um, revelations. And for Hari Jeevan's information and other Yogi Bhajan followers who refuse to acknowledge uh, Pamela's experiences, there have been many posts from other former followers of Yogi Bhajan who have said that they were abused as well. So it's not just Pamela. There are more and more people coming out with these um, experiences that they've had with Yogi Bhajan of abuse. I myself witnessed several instances where Yogi Bhajan physically abused people. And uh, I also, uh, of course, experienced where Yogi Bhajan emotionally and mentally abused uh, myself and others, uh, and financially too, where I was um, persuaded, if you will, to get involved in these illegal uh, activities. So that's all for now. And thank you for watching this video. Why did you call Sa? Why did you keep fate?